So let's take a look here at the first one. Okay, they're looking at for the special centers. And you can see that a circle that contains all the vertices of a polygon is circumscribed about the polygon. All right, so the prefix circum means to kind of like go around, right? So like when like Magellan, for example, is known for like circumnavigating the globe, that means he navigated around the you know entire Earth uh, on his boat, right? Um, so here in the tri in this picture, right, triangle X Y Z, okay, is um, being circumscribed by circle C, circle with center C there, okay, and circle C is called the circum circle, all right, and um, the center, right, point C is called the circum center, okay. So anyway, there's that. The way we find that center of the triangle that allows us to draw that circle that goes right around the outside of the triangle is by using the perpendicular bisectors, okay? You notice here that they just chose kind of two sides, like side PR and side RQ, and they find the perpendicular bisectors. You can see like the construction marks, right, and the construction marks there. And then where those two perpendicular bisectors intersect creates that point, okay? So we're going to do that too, except it's already done the paper here for us. We're going to do it on our paper, okay? So we're going to call this, I would say, like the, like, we'll say this kind of like our own notes here. Uh, this is going to be the special centers of a triangle. And believe it or not, there's more than one, okay? So those, there'll be some other ones that we do today, too. But the first we're going to look at is the circumcenter. Okay? And it's found using the angle bisectors. So it's kind of like a little cheat sheet, I guess, for us to help us kind of summarize all that information there. <coughs> all right. So let's go ahead and draw a triangle using our straight edge, okay, on our paper here so we can, like, kind of get an example. Um, you can draw whatever kind of triangle you like. All right. So I'm going to draw... Hmm. What do I want to say here? Yeah, just draw whatever kind tri of triangle you like. You can draw an obtuse triangle, you can draw a right triangle, you can draw an acute triangle, whatever you like. I'm going to draw a right triangle, or about a right triangle. Okay, so that's approximate right angle. Okay, and then label your triangle. I'm going to call mine ABC. <coughs> okay. And now take your compass. All right, and we're going to pick a side. And it doesn't really matter what side you pick, any side you want. So. I'm going to pick side AC in my triangle. So I'm going to turn my paper because I don't like having it like oriented in a different way. It helps me to kind of do this if you turn your paper so that like the side is facing you. So now I'm turning this paper so that AC is like facing me like it normally would whenever I'm doing these instructions. Okay? You want to kind of ignore A, B, and B, C at the moment. Right now you just want to focus on AC and you want to do the perpendicular bisector for that. Okay? Remember the perpendicular bisector, as Hunter said earlier, you put your compass point on Vertex A, make sure your compass is open a little bit more than halfway, and you just do a big old arc. Like that. Right? And then, oof, yeah, Keegan, you need a new one. Hang on. So I can get you a different one there, because that's no bueno. No good. Try that one. Mm hmm. Okay, so we did our two arcs, and then we're going to draw Take a look in the cardboard box if you're looking for another compass. Some of those are like less used, so or if you just need a pencil, then oh, there you go, too. Okay, so there's my perpendicular bisector. 
I'm going to mark in some important things, right? So it's like a perpendicular, so I'm going to put the little right angle in there. I'm going to go ahead and put the little congruency marks in. You don't have to put those in, but it's just it's helpful to remember, you know, that, that it, those two parts are equal there. Are you looking for one that's, that is decent? Try checking the com cardboard box there and see if you can find some ones that are not so loose. Just check them out and see. Yeah, there you go. Okay. I need to, well, if I bring in a screwdriver, I can tighten those ones, but these ones are really the best right here. <coughs> so anyway. Okay, so there's our first one, and let's go ahead and do another one. Okay, so pick another side, turn your paper. I'm going to do side BC for mine, okay? I like to turn it again. If you, don't ha if you don't need to turn it, don't turn it, but I like to turn mine. Also, if you're having some trouble, if you're like paper sliding around on you on your desk, it's not a bad idea to do this construction on top of your book. Your book allows your like compass point to kind of press into the paper a little easier, and so it gets a better grip that way. Let's just take that as a piece of advice. If you're having some trouble, do it inside your book. <coughs> and then where those two perpendicular bisectors, and I'll go ahead and mark this one perpendicular as well, and I'll put two tick marks on either side there because it's, it's, they're both congruent, but they're not the same congruence as those two, so that's why I'm going to put two tick marks. Okay. You can see my perpendicular bisectors intersect at a particular point right here. Okay? And you can call that point whenever you want. I'll call it just point P, I guess, for right here. Okay? But that, that point that we found right there is the circumcenter. If you did the perpendicular bisector for A, B as well, okay, for your third side, it should intersect that point. Okay? So, yes. Yeah, so Oh, sorry, okay, for the second part, so just, you do the perpendicular bisector for one side, then you do the perpendicular bisector for another side. That's it. Just do two perpendicular bisectors, one for each, one for, you know, one per side. <coughs> That's it. Now, did anyone else do a right triangle like mine? Okay. And where did your, where did your uh, circumcenter end up there, Drew? Pretty much like the same spot as your... Okay, pretty much the same spot. Mason, same idea? Same, same Maria? So where did it end up? What, what is that on? If we're going to go ahead and just say it's a right, ang right triangle here, what is this? The hypotenuse. Ah, interesting. Did anyone do an acute triangle? You did, Evan? Yes. Okay, so where did your circumcenter end up? Mine kind of ended up in, like, somewhere near the middle of the triangle, not necessarily on the line. But it's inside the triangle, yeah. right? Mary, yours too? Is it inside? Okay, Michael, yours is, as well? Very good. Did anyone do an, uh, an obtuse triangle? All right, so Patrick, where did your circumcenter end up? Outside. Outside the triangle. Interesting. So it looks like we can maybe make a conjecture here, right? Potentially, possibly, if you have an obtuse triangle, your circumcenter may end up outside the triangle. If you have an acute triangle, it looks like then the circumcenter may end up on the inside of the triangle. And if you have a right triangle, it looks like the circumcenter may end up on the triangle, and specifically on the hypotenuse. Interesting. Um, but now, let's do what we did this for, right? So why do we draw this? Remember, this point P, it's the center of a circumcircle. So if we put our compass point on point P, okay, I should be able to open up my compass to one of the vertices, for example, point A, okay, and like measure it so that your compass pencil is just hitting the vertex A, or B or C, it doesn't matter, and then if you draw around, okay, what does the circumcircle hit? What does it, what does it touch on our triangle? What is it touching? The vertices, exactly right, all the vertices. So since our circumcircle is touching both points A, B, and C. Okay, what do you think the relationship is between the distances PA, PB, and PC? How do you think those distances relate? Again, if I was to measure from P to A, from P to B, and P to C, how do you think those distances would relate? 
they have to be equal. Do you, can you explain why, Maria? They are going to be equal. Shannon? Yeah, it's all, these are all radii of the circle, right? From P to C, well, C is on the circle. So for P to C, P is the center. So P to C, that's a radii, a radius. P to A, P is the center. A is on the circle, so P to A is a radius. And P to B, right? B is on the circle, so P to B, that's another radius. Okay, does the radius of a circle ever change? No, a circle's radius is constant, right? So yeah, so in this case, a property here is that PA equals PB equals PC, okay? So in other words, the circumcenter okay, is equidistant from the vertices of a triangle. <coughs> Equidistant. So that's kind of useful, right? Let's say, for example, that, you know, these uh, A, B, and C, these were like maybe towns on a map, right? And we were like looking, you know, from the top down, and we're like, okay, we have these three towns. They kind of make a triangle when we have those three towns. And let's say that we want to locate a, you know, a, a fire station such that the fire station is the same distance from all these towns, right? We, want to, we don't want that fire station to favor a particular town. We want to place that fire station in the spot where it's going to, you know, have similar distances to all three cities if it's got to like rescue people from all three cities. And so how can we do that? Well, on the map, we could literally do the perpendicular bisectors between two sides, right, and then locate the circumcenter, and so that would, that would guarantee that that fire station would have an equal distance between the points. Now, of course, that's not counting things like roads and stuff like that, right? Like there might not be a direct road from there to there, there to there, there to there, but still, the idea is, at least geographically, we would know as the crow flies, right, that these this fire station would be the equal distance to A, C, and B. Okay. So that's the use of that. Okay. Questions on any of that? <coughs> okay, so let's kind of go through this then here. <coughs> All right. So turn the page. Page 360, okay. You can see here some vocabulary. Three or more lines are concurrent if they intersect at the same point, right? It's kind of no big deal that two lines intersect and form a point, right? Because pretty much any two lines you draw, unless they're parallel, are going to intersect. But if you have three lines that intersect at the same spot, that's a little more special. And that's, what, that's why we introduced the word concurrent here, okay? Three or more lines that intersect at the same point are called concurrent. And so that, that we say that because here, if we drew all three of these perpendicular bisectors, they would all intersect at point P. We only do two because we only need two, but we could do all three there and they would all intersect. Okay? The point of intersection is called the point of concurrency. So the circumcenter is an example of a point of concurrency. Okay? And so then you, you can see here the circumcenter theorem, the perpendicular bisectors of the sides of a triangle intersect at a point that is equidistant from the vertices of the triangle. So PA equals PB equals PC. Okay? Just like we had said earlier. It's kind of convenient that I use those same letters. Okay, we're not going to prove it though, so no worries on that. Okay, but we are going to use some properties here. So if you go over to the next page and they explain two, we're going to use properties of perpendicular bisectors. Okay, so you can use the circumcenter theorem to find segment lengths in a triangle. So for example here, KZ, so there's KZ, LZ, and MZ are the perpendicular bisectors of triangle GHJ. You'll see they only drew them long enough to where they touch the, where they all intersect. <coughs> Use the given information to find the length of each segment. Note that the figure is not on a scale. Okay, fine. So there's our picture. Point Z is the circumcenter, and KZ, ZL, and ZM are all perpendicular bisectors. So, let's look at letter A. Here we're given that ZM is 7. So let's go ahead and label that. I'm going to use pencil to label it that way because we have some other sets of numbers for part B. So let's just use pencil here. So ZM is a length of 7. I can probably like zoom in on this bad boy some. <coughs> okay. ZM is 7. ZJ is 25. And HK, H to K, right there, is 20. <coughs> okay. So like for there to there is 25. From there to there is 7. And from there to there is 20. 
okay? We want to find ZH. So ZH, what must that equal? Any, any ideas here? What must ZH equal? Mary? 25. 25. How'd you get that? Exactly right, okay? And she's exactly right. So Z, remember guys, is the circumcenter. The distance from Z to J is 25. So therefore, the distance from Z to H is 25. What other segment here must be a distance of 25? Seven? Z to G, you got it, exactly right. Very good. All right, let's look at HG. All right, what must HG be? What must the length of HG be? Anyone have any ideas here? What must... H G B. All right, let's go to Hunter. What do you say, Hunter? Forty. Okay, how'd you get forty? Because um, K H bisects G H. K H bisects G H. Okay. In a manner of speaking, what thing is bisecting? So what what's bisecting H G there, Hunter? Uh, K Z is right. And so since K Z is bisecting, if this is twenty, K G must also be then. 20, and so that gives you a total of 40. Yeah, that's right. That's the right idea. Right idea there. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Questions on that? <coughs> All right, so how about you guys then go ahead and try letter B, okay? It's not done for you. So you're going to want to erase this old information because that was only for that problem. So go ahead and try now letter, letter B, okay? So you can relabel that. Give that a shot, and then we'll, uh, I'll call on some people. And I'll walk around too if you want to ask some questions for me. You don't have to fill in the little blanks there if you don't want to, by the way. I think they're kind of more complicated than they need to be filled out. All right, I'm going to call on some folks then. Let's see here. Julie, what do you say? What about, uh, give me KG. What would you give for KG? 68, and how did you do that? What did you do? Yeah, okay, so you divide 136 by 2. Okay, very good, that's right. All right, let's go to... Patrick, what'd you get for ZJ, Patrick? ZJ. ZJ. Did you get that far yet? Okay. So we're going to someone else then. Uh, let's go to oh, Melissa's not here. Melissa? No answer. All right. Maybe next time, Melissa. You got it. All right. Uh, Keegan, did you get uh, ZJ? No. no, not yet. Okay, still thinking. That's okay. Um, I already talked to Mary. Sorry, Mary. I'm going to try someone else here. Let's go to Elizabeth. 
85. You got it. Maria, is that what you're going to say? 85. Good. Okay. Yes, 85 for ZJ, 68 for KG. Okay. So, how did you get the 85 there, um, Elizabeth? What gave it away? <coughs> exactly right. Okay. So, well, so HZ, okay, so Keegan and Patrick, Z is the circumcenter, right? So this point has to be the same distance to H as it is to G as it is to J. So if ZH is 85, that means ZJ will also be 85, and ZG must also be 85 because it's the circumcenter. It'll be the center of that circle that hits H, G, and J. Okay, that's the idea there. Any other questions on that? Okay. Coolio. Um, all right, we'll hold off on doing that. Your turn there. I think we're going to be okay on that. All right. <clears throat> One other thing I want to show. They have, um, they want us to find the circumcenter on the coordinate plane. We're going to do that, okay. They, uh, I think the book wants us to do it using, right, I guess I'll just, <coughs> okay. Um, they want us to actually, like, find the equations for the perpendicular bisectors. Um, we can do that. Let's give it a shot and see if we can do that. And if nothing else, we can always fall back on our compasses, okay? So let's take a look here. Let's plot our points. So again, sorry, this is on page 363, page 363. Okay, page 363. Let's take a look at letter B here. Okay, let's see if we can do this. So we're going to plot our coordinates. So A is negative 1, 5. Okay, B is 5, 5. And C is... 5, negative 1. Okay, I'm going to use my straight edge here to connect these dots. Make the sides up. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Whew. Got an idea? Yeah. Okay, so what do you want to do? How can we, what, how, do you, how do you want to start this, Tanner? Where should we start? Or how should we start? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, so you're talking about AC? Yeah. Okay, so the slope's not one. Be careful. It's not positive oh, one. Okay. Negative one, right. So, yeah, we're going to, okay. So you want to count down three, and then that puts it right in the middle. Then, because we can go down three, right three again, and that gets us that point. Okay. So there's that, and then we need another point, though, right, to, to write a line to make the perpendicular bisector. Or do you just want to say, that's it? Yeah. Okay, 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 you're right, but I want to make sure that we can see the other parts here. Because remember, how do we normally do a circumcenter? We do the perpendicular bisectors. Let's not focus on trying to do the perpendicular bisector for AC, although we could, we could, but let's instead focus on something easier. For example, like side AB. Side AB is horizontal or vertical? Anybody. It's horizontal, right. So that means its perpendicular bisector will have to be what? Vertical. So we have to draw a vertical line here somewhere. Well, where should that vertical line be drawn? If it's a perpendicular bisector, that means it has to do what to AB? Split it in half. Where is the halfway point? At what x-coordinate? Two. two. So if we just go right to two and draw a vertical line... There's our perpendicular bisector. Okay? We don't even need to use our compasses. Now, we could use our compasses. Compasses would still work, but we don't need it. There it is. There's our perpendicular bisector. <coughs> and uh, Tanner's right. It did go right through that point there. We've got to come up with another one, though. Let's just check to make sure that Tanner's right there. Okay, now let's look at, let's look at side BC. BC is vertical, so that means its perpendicular bisector must be horizontal. And it's got to cut BC in half, so what Y coordinate will do that? I think it's 2 as well. Yeah, right there. And sure enough, Tanner was, Tanner was right. So there's our circumcenter. Okay.
And if you're unsure, if you don't believe me, we can also always put our pencils, i get my pencil here back in the compass, and then we can like po point on the circumcenter, open it up just so that it barely, or so that it's touching A, and then circle around. Oof, my pencil's a little bit too far. Okay, so point in there. Voila. Okay, there it is. Our circumcircle. Okay, so there we didn't even need to use the compass and straight edge because well we knew we knew enough we knew enough there. All right, so there it is. So I would like you guys to go ahead then. Ooh, let's actually this is, there's a good question here at the top number seven. Okay, could a vertex of a triangle also be its circumcenter? If so, provide an example. If not, explain why not. So could a vertex of a triangle also be its circumcenter? What do you guys think? What do you guys think? So just think about it real quick here. I'll, I'll call on someone in just a second, but think about that. Can the vertex of a triangle be its circumcenter? Okay. So Hunter, what do you want to say? Uh, no. No. Okay. So can you explain why not though? Um, Right, that's right. And then we don't really have a triangle. Exactly right. Yep, that's a very eloquent way, very, very eloquently stated there. I would say that's perfect. Exactly right. Okay. So, um, it is not possible, and again, however you want to say that, you know, it is not possible because the circumcenter must be equidistant to the vertices. Okay. And if the circumcenter is the same as the vertex, then all vertices will be the same point. Okay. There will be no triangle. Not the most succinct way of putting it. Maybe there's a shorter way. They only gave me two lines, but I think it was the best way to put it, though. I can't think of a better way to put it. So, yeah, that's the basic idea. Okay. Why don't you go ahead and try one there, either eight or nine. I'll let you guys pick how you want to do it, okay? Eight or nine. Give one of those a shot. I would challenge you to try it without using your compass, okay? Challenge you to do it without using your compass. So either eight or nine. Go ahead and try it without using a compass.
Very good. <coughs> okay, so boom. There they go. Okay. Something like that. Number nine, it's a little bit trickier because you had like it was like a halfway kind of dealy there for that vertical line. Ooh, and my horizontal line there is not very good. But anyway, you see the idea. You get the point. Okay. There they are. Kind of nice. Kind of a plane like that. Not too shabby. Okay. Um, all right, so let me also now, we're, so that was that. We're going to look at one other special center. All right, and so if you want to flip the page to page 300, uh, yeah, we'll look at 371, but actually we're going to go back to our paper paper here. Okay, the angle bisectors of a triangle also all, they find a special center. Okay, so... If you want to go back to your little uh, your printer paper papers that I gave you, okay, we're going to do another special center, and this special center is called the in center. Okay, so the circumcenter was a point that then allowed us to create a circle that went around the outside of the triangle. Anyone want to guess what the in center does? Yeah, it's a point that lets us draw a circle that fits inside of our triangle. Okay? So it is found using the... Oh, my gosh. I made a huge mistake on my notes here. Sorry, guys. These are not angle bisectors here. I apologize for that. I wrote angle bisectors. I meant perpendicular bisectors. Sorry about that. Because that was totally the perpendicular bisectors that we were doing there. My apologies. Okay? In center is found using the angle bisectors, right? Because we totally were not bisecting angles there. We were bisecting sides. So sorry about that, okay? So again, circumcenter, perpendicular bisectors, in center, angle bisectors. Okay. So again, let's draw a triangle. <coughs> Any old triangle will do. My recommendation, though, is to draw this triangle bigger. Okay, so like this, this one, try and draw it a little bit bigger than your circumcenter triangle because this one, the circle's got to fit inside your triangle. So the smaller you draw your triangle, the smaller that circle's going to be and the harder it will be to actually construct. So I'm going to draw a bigger triangle here. Okay. I'm going to draw a acute triangle this time just because. Okay, something like that. And I'll call this triangle, I don't know, D, E, F. Okay. All right, now the angle bisectors. So to do the angle bisectors, you pick an angle. So I'm going to pick angle D. I'm going to turn my paper. Okay, I, for whatever reason, I like to use my compass left-handed, which is really weird, but for whatever reason, it works for me that way. So if you're right-handed, if you like to use your compass using your right hand, then turn, then use whatever angle is on your right side here. So if you're right hand, if you like draw this, if you do your compass stuff with your right hand, then make sure you're going to do angle S, like mine right here. Okay? But me, for whatever reason, I like to use my left hand when doing constructions. I don't know why. And so I'm going to be bisecting angle D here. Okay? All right. So do you remember how to do angle bisector? Okay, so anytime you do an angle bisector, or anything you anytime you do something with an angle, you always start at the vertex of your angle. So compass point on D for me. And then you always do the first construction the same. It's always one arc that intersects both sides of your angle. The purpose of that is to find two equidistant points from your vertex. So I create these little two equidistant points. Okay, this point is the same distance to D as this point is to D. Okay, so a single arc there like that, yep. And then you pick up your compass and you put your point on that new point that you could created and then swipe in. And then on the other point, you put your compass point down and swipe in. And where those two swipes intersect, 
that's where you draw your ray from D through that point of intersection. <coughs> okay, so there's one angle bisector right there. Okay, questions on any of that? Am I going too fast for anybody? Please say something. My first block class. They waited until I was done and said, you went too fast. I'm like, please say something sooner and I'll slow down. Okay. So now pick another angle. I'm going to pick angle E. Okay. Pick another angle. Turn your paper if you want to. I recommend it. And then go ahead and bisect that other angle. Okay, be careful. Sometimes these arcs can get a little confusing. If you want to erase back some of your marks, that's okay, too. You can, like, erase them down some. Don't, you know, erase the whole marks, but you can erase them back some if they're, like, if there's just too much going on for you and you're a little, a little too busy for you. Okay. Okay, and then those two angle bisectors, they will intersect at a specific point, and that point is in center. Okay, so there's the in center. <coughs> now, if our circle is going to fit inside of our triangle, if our circle is going to fit inside of our triangle, Will the circle be touching the vertices? Right? When we drew when we drew our circumcircle, it went around the outside, it just touched all the vertices. What will our circle be touching here? The sides. Exactly right. So we, in order to draw this circle, you're going to put your compass point on the in center. I'm sorry. Yep. Yep. No, not a problem. Thank you for saying something. Okay. Okay, great. So, to draw your in, your in circle, I guess we'll call this, you're going to put your compass point on the in center, and then adjust your compass so that the pencil will barely touch one of the sides. So you can see how my pencil is like barely going to hit this side right here. And then just, then you can draw your circle. Okay, that adjustment should be enough. Ugh. Ay, ay, ay. For whatever reason, I'm not good at these. I can do the circumcenter one okay, but these, no. Okay, perfect. It perfectly fits inside my triangle. It does not go outside at all. <laughs> yeah. These, for whatever reason, are harder to do, and I'm not sure why. I don't know why. Circumcenter, I find much more easy, but for whatever reason, these is no. Nope, nope, nope. Looks nice. Looks good. Yeah, I, I'm not, I, not me. Nope. Can't do it. Okay. No siri, Bob. But there's the end center. Okay. So, because the circle fits inside, the end center is equidistant, not to the vertices of the triangle, but to the what? To the sides. The end center is equidistant... to the sides of the triangle. <coughs> okay? And that's that's the key kind of property there at the end center. Okay. There's one well there's actually two more special centers, but only one of the two special centers has to has any sort of properties about it. The other one's just like, hey, it makes a point, and that's all. Mm -hmm. um, we'll look at those tomorrow though, so don't worry about that. Those are the two we're going to focus on today. So with a few, with a few more minutes here, I want to take a look at, then at some of the properties of this end center. Okay? Just like we had properties for the circumcenter, we also have properties for that end center there. Okay. So 
Any questions here? We're going to move on. I know it's a little intense, guys, but I want to make sure we get through this today because I'm going to have this all covered. Okay. So, looking on page 372, okay, we talk about an angle bisector and the properties that arise from angle bisectors. Okay. If a point is on the bisector of an angle, so here, for example, point C is on ray PC, which is the bisector of an angle. How do you know it's a bisector? Well, if I zoom in a million times here, you can see that those itty bitty little arcs there are showing that PAC, or APC and CPB are all congruent, uh, congruent angles there. Okay? So that shows us that PC must be an angle bisector. And therefore, as a result of that, Okay, the distance from point C to this side of angle APB is going to be the same as the distance from point C to, to uh, point B, which is on the other side of angle APB. So, since, so PC bisects angle APB, okay, and so therefore any point on this angle bisector is going to be the same distance to one side of that angle APB as the other side of angle APB. And then the reverse is also true as well. If you have a point that's equidistant to the two sides of an angle, therefore that point is on the perpendicular, or sorry, the angle bisector there. Okay? So to see that in practice, let's kind of look at some problems here. It's like so easy, it's, I don't even know why we need to talk about it, but here we'll do it, okay? So for example here, we want to find the measure of LM. So there's LM, okay? And KM is the angle bisector of angle JKL. How do we know? Again, those teeny tiny little arcs there show that that's in the middle. So if JM is 12.8, what must ML be? You got it. There it is. Mind blown. Okay. Yeah, there you go. All right. Now let's, let's look at B. Okay. So here we're asked to find the measure of angle ABD. So we want to find this angle measure right here. Okay, but we're given that angle ABC, the full angle here, is 112 degrees. How can we find the measure of angle ABD? Divide 112 by 2. Exactly right. Since AD is 74 and DC is a length of 74, that means BD is an angle bisector. And so therefore, this angle is 112, then ABD is going to be 112 divided by 2, which is 56 degrees. Okay, that's about... It. Okay, so those are your properties. And then I think everything else is, yeah, hunky-dory. Okay, so your assignment, 